Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today I just wanted to go over the charging procedures for uh, air conditioning system. All right, R regardless of whether that's a heat pump or an air uh, standard air conditioner like a condenser. All right, so um, this is charging systems that have thermostatic expansion valves as their metering device. All right, so. 410A, R22, you know, um, whatever that may be, all right? So using the subcoin charging procedure for units with TXVs only, all right, I'm just going to read right down the list here. I developed this list just to um, answer some questions for people uh, and just to give you a step-by-step -step, uh, screenshot of kind of how to do this, all right? So you take your readings from the small liquid line port with the red high side gauge, all right? Most residential air conditioning units will typically call for 8 to 12 degrees of subcoin, uh, but they can be higher. I've seen as high as 17 degrees of subcoin, all right, but typically it could be 9 degrees or 11 degrees, whatever that may be, um, on the rating plate, all right. If you find too small of a subcooling, all right, so it's too low of an amount, then you need to add refrigerant, and that will lower the actual temperature that you get on your liquid line all right and it increases the high side pressure all right so you have a gap that is widening at that point in time because you have a saturated temperature aligned with the pressure as that goes higher and your actual temperature goes lower it opens up the gap there and increases the subcooling uh, temperature difference all right if the subcooling is too much then you need to recover the refrigerant and that will end up lowering the subcooling so say somebody overcharged it and there's 20 or 30 uh, degrees of subcooling you need to recover refrigerant out of there and then give it a chance to run for a while in order to check for your your new subcooling all right to charge out their units to have a TXV that target subcoolings posted on the rating plate like we discussed before uh, and you want to have 70 degrees outside. You want to have a load on the building uh, when you're checking the air conditioning system. But if you at least have 65 degrees, you can do it. Um, so, you know, you, you need to have some type of a load on the building just in order for the air conditioning uh, evaporator coil to absorb heat. And that to be within the normal parameters for the outdoor unit to reject the heat. All right. So step one. Read the pressure from the high side gauge connected to the liquid port on the condensing unit or the heat pump. All right, so you're looking at that small liquid line port. You need to attach your red side gauge to that with a red hose. All right, convert the pressure to the saturated temperature um, on your gauge set or with a pressure temperature chart that you have. Take the reading of the actual temperature on that same liquid line, just three inches away. Uh, or, you know, pretty pretty close away um, from where your port is, all right? The actual temperature should be lower than the saturated temp that you're reading on your gauge. So if you read your pressure on the red gauge, you follow that into whatever refrigerant. If it's green R22, you look at that um, temperature, okay? And the actual temperature should be lower than that saturated temperature, which is on your gauge set. All right, the uh, saturated temperature uh, from the red high side gauge is what you want to take first, and you want to minus the actual temperature of the liquid line. All right, so right below there, I have sat temp, so saturated temp from your gauge minus the actual temp equals the subcooling. All right, and then just to confirm a correct refrigerant charge, you just take that return air inside the building minus the supplier, which will be lower in temperature and you should get roughly around 18 to 21 degree temp difference you want to get pretty close to where the unit is all right um, where the indoor unit is in order to take those temperatures all right you'll get that as long as there's not too high of a humidity inside the building that the evaporator coil is presently dealing with now in reference to the TXV it is going to uh, open up um, more refrigerant into that evaporator coil uh, you know, when it's we when have warm conditioned air coming across there. All right. But that's that. All right. I hope this helps. I hope this is something that you can take with you and you can kind of just review uh, in reference to learning how to charge HVAC systems. All right. Hope you enjoyed yourself. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, leave a comment below. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. See you next time. AC Service Tech Channel.